Hey guys, so I'm finally gonna try and do a process build video and I'm gonna do the 270 awning. I'm working on my second one I've ever made and it's gonna have some improvements, be a little slimmer um, and just little tweaks and stuff that I figured out as I made the first one. So I hope this video is not too hard to follow. I've already got started and made the hinge, uh, the basic parts of the hinge. So I will cover that and then I'm gonna walk you through how I'm gonna build this. Let's get started. All right, so this is what I put together yesterday, and this is the basics of the hinge that are going to hold all three arms. It's just tacked together right now. This is 3 16 steel, and these holes are 5 16 um, diameter, which means you can run a 5 16 bolt through here, and the 5 16 fits a skateboard bearing perfectly the inner diameter so that's why they're cut that size um, these cuts were made using a skill saw with a metal cutting blade on it um, and I'm going to show you that it's right here now. is the saw blade that I'm using to cut all this metal this is $29 at the local Home Depot uh, it's a Diablo steel demon with Sermont and carbide tips um, and it's made for cutting metal just like this and honestly it works incredibly well 29 bucks, you can put one on a classic wood cutting miter saw um, or a classic skill saw, I have it on there. Lasts quite a long time for the price and allows me to cut 3 16 steel, plate steel, and probably even quarter inch, I haven't tried it on quarter inch, but it cuts with a new blade, it'll cut just like you're cutting wood. It's pretty incredible. So using a miter saw, um, this was given to me, this was given to me, but you can get this kind of stuff um, at garage sales, um, some of your old maybe friends are getting rid of. They updated it. If you buy brand new, they are they can be expensive, but it's an awesome investment. And um, you can you can find cheap ones. Like I said, check out Craigslist in garage sales. Great place to find this stuff. But this is the saw blade. If you want to get into working with metal, I highly recommend trying one of those out. All right, guys. So here is the basic tool setup I'm using today. Um, you don't need to have all these tools. But something like this would be really helpful. This is a wood cutting miter saw with one of those steel blades. Um, I have two angle grinders. I've had one just for a really long time and I finally just bought another. These are about 50 bucks. This is probably the most useful and universal tool you can get. Um, angle grinder. Like I said, I have two so I don't have to switch between um, sanding and cutting if I need to. Just a cheap measuring tape. This is called a speed square. This lets you get um, nice clean square 90s when you're cutting stuff, you know? Um, so that's important, that's probably just a buck or two. This is something new. Um, you can just use a permanent marker, but this is a silver streak um, pin and it's for, it's like a almost like a clay inside there for marking on metal. Works pretty good. This is a birthday gift or anniversary gift a drill, a really nice one. Um, you don't have to get one that's this nice, but if you're making stuff, you're most likely going to have to put holes in it, so grab yourself a drill. Um, and then I've got some hearing protection. These are actually my shooting um, ears protection. I use them for both. So if you're into shooting, you could use these, or if you're getting into both, buy those and you can use them. Those are about $40 on Amazon. These are also from Amazon. I use them for shooting too. The brand I think is Bat Fox, some funny name, but they're just safety glasses. You definitely wanna have safety glasses when you're using anything having to do with cutting metal. Um, and then lastly, I don't know if I'll use this cause I got the miter saw, but this is the skill saw I showed you earlier with the same steel cutting blade on it. So yeah, that is the basic selection of tools I'm using to make all these metal projects. And I've got my vacuum set up there for doing shavings, but um, yeah. That's basically what I use to make the sliders, the racks, um, the awnings, basically everything so far. So simple tools, not that expensive. Get yourself some. I wanna talk about the welder. Um, this is the biggest piece of equipment and you gotta have one of these if you're gonna be making an awning in the way that I'm making it. Now, I've wanted to learn how to weld for so long and I finally got a welder. I wish, the only thing I wish I did differently was that I got a welder sooner because this is so easy to use and it opens up so many doors if you like doing DIY projects. So first things first, 
these can be expensive and that was one of the main reasons why I didn't get one sooner um, actually from in my particular case I actually won this uh, welder in a giveaway and it was a super blessing because I wouldn't have picked out one that was as expensive as this but this um, setup works so well and I've actually made four times the value of this welder in a few months just doing projects and selling some of the stuff I've made with it so cheapest tool that I own I think this whole setup as you're seeing it right here would be about a thousand dollars for the Forney welder and it's a 220 MP um, someone gave me this welding helmet but you can get a cheap auto tinting welding helmet for under a hundred bucks um, this is the Harbor Freight $40 welding cart it goes on sale and I added a piece of wood on top to fit the larger welder. This is an 80 cubic feet um, bottle. If I, I think it's 80 pounds or 80 feet, I can't remember. Um, it's a good size. It costs about 50 bucks to fill up. You can do a lot of projects before you got to fill it up. Um, so welder, cart, gloves. These are from Harbor Freight for $10. They're really comfortable. Um, a pair of these are called whelpers. They're basically just pliers, but they're perfect. They're made for welders. You clean out the tip and cut the uh, wire out and all that kind of stuff. So super useful. Um, the gas is 75.25, um, and yeah, the bottle itself is about 200 bucks. So that's kind of a an expensive startup cost. But like I said, this whole setup together, maybe 1300 bucks, 1400 dollars. I think I've made um, $4,500 with it already in a few months, and that's just starting out not knowing how to do anything and just going with it. It is so easy to use, so get yourself a welder. Honestly, if you've, if you've ever thought about it, it is amazing and 100% worth it, so let's get started. All right, you guys, so for this awning, I'm using arms that are seven feet long, um, and or for two, two of them are seven feet long, one of them is seven foot four. These, this is the steel for two of the arms that are gonna be seven feet. I've got um, four pieces of the tubing stacked up here. And that's one of the awesome advantages of having a, a miter saw like this. You can cut um, all four pieces at once. They're all gonna be nice and square and it's really time efficient. So let me cut this and show you how well this saw blade does on metal. So we're all lined up here. Okay, so I purposely go through it slow. You don't want to overheat the blade, but that just cuts through no problem. It's not hot. There's no burr. That's why one of these blades is just amazing for metal work. The next material we are working with is galvanized pipe. Now, galvanized pipe is harmful to weld. The fumes of it are poisonous, so you need to remove the galvanizing um, before you weld it, which is what I've done here, ground it off, um, we're using this for the arms um, of the awning. The bearings are going to go inside here, so this is going to be the hinge. And for this one, we just need three pieces that are two and a half inches um, in length. So I'm going to mark that out now and then cut it with the miter saw. pieces of pipe nice and square and cut and they are going to be going in here for the arms um, this is bending together a little bit but you'll see that'll go in like that and that one back here and um, these connect to the arms so let's get it laid out and we can tack it together um, important part of working with metal and welding um, is you want to clean up right where you're gonna weld. Now, obviously this metal's got rust on it and it looks pretty bad. It's actually just been sitting out in my garage for a couple months, so it looks like this. This uh, rust will knock right off with a little sandpaper. But even so, if this metal was really smooth and clean and shiny, you wanna grind just the surface here about this much because your welds will be a lot cleaner if you do that. You get rid of any um, 
mill scale and grease and stuff and your welds come out a lot better so I'm gonna do that now I just cleaned up the ends on all of them, and here's just a little example of what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that very well. But you're basically just sanding down the end so that the welds um, come out a lot cleaner. And you're working with clean metal with no grease on it. So I'm ready to tack this stuff together. And here's where your speed square comes in handy. So it's going to be hard to tell here, but what all we're going to do is throw the speed square on the end there sure it's all square this to support it and this guy is going to go right like that for this design I want the upper arm to be nice and parallel and then the lower arm is going to have a curve in it up to meet the uh, end like that this is exaggerated but I want this top one to be nice and square and then I'm going to tack the far end of the lower one and then just bring this one to the base here. And that'll give us our angle. So first things first, we're gonna tack right here. Okay, found a smarter way of making sure that this was uh, both on the same level, so going to do it vertically here and then I can set it right in the middle there. Tack down there. We've got the ground snap holding it right here. Let me just tack the end of this too. Alright guys, so I tacked them and then I just did some full welds on them. Um, not the prettiest thing. Like I said, it's a learning curve and I'm still learning. But the cool thing is with MIG welding, this is totally strong. Um, there's no porosity, plenty of heat. And it's just incredible how strong <laughs> metal is once you've welded it. So, a um, little hard to work with the thin gauge metal. So keep that in mind. It wants to pop through pretty fast, but this will do. And we'll clean it up with a wire brush and on to the next part. Okay, so next I want to put a little brace in between each one of these because right now the span is long enough that you can kind of bend it with your hand. But if we separate this a little bit and put a little tiny um, brace in between, it'll really help stiffen this up. And so I'm going to cut this up on the uh, miter saw and place a couple of them in there. three and I know they're not at an angle but it doesn't matter because we're gonna weld and the weld will fill in so let's go stick these in. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try and place this guy right about here. Easy to do with two hands, kind of hard to do with one so let's see if this opens up enough. There we go. Okay so that's in there a little tension holding it and that just decreases the amount of flex it's gonna have. We can add more too, so I'm gonna add another one here, and so on, and so on. And I think after I add these, I'm gonna go down here and add a couple wider ones too. 
All right, we've got our little braces artfully placed. Now we are going to weld them in. All right, everything's welded up. I know the welds look pretty ugly, but I'm going fast and trying to shoot a video, so. I added some welds on the inside too, because that's where most of the structural strength is to hold those together. These guys are good. So now we're gonna use the angle grinder and clean everything up and get ready for the next part. You need an old skateboard or you can order skateboard bearings online. Um, they're about 20 bucks, but check out why this is such a fun part of the project. Grab the wheel. Let's see. Okay, so skateboard bearing. Check out how well it fits in here. Okay, just a little pressure and that's perfect. Now, this time I actually drilled some holes and that's because I'm gonna do a little weld inside there to hold the bearing because it was a little loose on some of these. Um, I don't really recommend welding in your bearing because that kind of defeats the purpose of having a bearing. You can have it serviceable. But for us, all we're doing is trying to get this 5 16 hole. Um, and since these aren't spinning and spinning, they're just moving a little bit, it's totally gonna be smooth and fine. Um, Last time I built this, I used different pipe and I actually drilled out the center to this diameter so they don't go in any farther. You could also put in a piece of tubing that uh, didn't let these compress all the way. So I'm trying this welding um, technique on this one. Um, I'll add in the description if it goes bad or goes well, but that's what I'm trying this time. I'm going to put these in nice and flush and then weld in those holes. So all let's right, see. let's see if we can... Make sure you have this in there when you're hammering in so they don't go in crooked. So that's in there. Now I'm gonna weld those little holes. The time right here is everything sitting in there. Um, I need to go get some bolts that are the right size, so 5 16 and I think I did three inches, so I'm gonna get like three and a half. But pretty exciting, liking the way it's looking. So much smaller than my other one. Okay, back from the hardware store, and I did get three and a half inch, <clears throat> excuse me, grade eight bolts with acorn nuts. These are called acorn nuts. Um, they're fully closed and they're smooth, so they won't catch on anything. And then two washers, um, and because this is three inches, it's just perfect. So that's gonna be nice, uh, nice finished look right there. And Believe it or not, I'm probably just going to throw some hammered paint on this, even though there's still little bits of uh, spotty rust. This hammered paint, um, Krylon hammered black paint works incredibly well. And um, yeah, I think that's where we're at. We're going to throw some paint. I got to drill the holes for the tarp mount. And then I got to drill my holes here to mount to my rack. But other than that, we're getting pretty dang close. Now I'm going to do the lifter arms too, but we can at least test it out first, so let's give it a try. Oh, I wanted to say real quick too, something I learned recently is you want to go really slow when you're drilling through metal, so almost like this slow and it allows the bit to just cut as opposed to going really fast 
and kind of burning the bit. So go really slow and work. And I got the holes drilled for the um, mount on my rack. And I'm just gonna get some paint on here and that way it doesn't get, I don't know, just sometimes it's nice to just throw some paint on. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. Probably should prep it better, but I'm not gonna oh, do yeah. the very best parts of this project. And the reason why I made this to this dimensions is you can buy this bag that is for a ARB awning that's eight feet long and I made it to fit right in here so you don't have to worry about making a bag. And this bag is only $35. Uh, that bag for my other awning cost me $70 because I had to buy the amount of material in the zipper and then you have to make it. So way nicer. I mean, it's all finished, 35 bucks. It's gonna be awesome. That's a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> all right guys, so skip ahead a couple days. I had to stop working on the awning. Um, and now I'm back at it and this next part is making the lifter arms So the little lifter arms really make a difference when you're under there. Uh, it just makes the whole um, Awning feel that much bigger and roomier So it's something really nice to add and I'm going to show you what they look like and how I'm going to make one Okay, I've got one made already since I already had the awning uh, Previously built I took it off there and I'm going to model it after the same one. So Basically what it is, is a roller. These are skateboard bearings again. And that's so when it's being pushed up against the tarp, it doesn't tear into the tarp at all. Down here, and this part is simple, but it's important to get it right. This little attachment point is just beyond vertical. So when this thing stands up, um, this is just a little bit past 90 degrees this way. And that's so that when there's tension on the top here, of the tarp this doesn't want to flip back down there's no uh, necessity to add like a it's not necessary to add like a rope or any type of um, thing to hold it still because once it goes up it goes past 90 and the pressure is actually trying to push it back that way so <laughs> little details um, and you want to attach it something like this can't put it on the side because then these arms wouldn't be able to close up um, too much space so put it on top little arms here just like this and I'm gonna make two more of those So these are going to be slightly shorter than the center one so that we keep that domed effect. And what I'm going to need to do here is get this area to be down and then hollow that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little triangle out here in each one of these and then fold this over, tack weld, and open this up. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so I made the cut on both sides. Let's see, pull this guy out. Now this should be able to fold under, so let's see how that does. Okay, so that's the basic, <laughs> a little twisted, but we can hammer that up, but that's the basic shape right there. So now I'm gonna do that to the other one, and then we're gonna cut this area out so it can rest on top. Okay, so you can see this one turned out well. This one I didn't cut as well. I think I cut too wide of a triangle. Um, so there's a little bit of a gap. I could just make another one, but honestly, the MIG welder, I'm gonna be able to fill that in, no problem. So I'm just gonna roll with it. All right, I'm going to open up this area here so that our bearing can roll in there. And I'm gonna use the cutoff wheel, so.
So cut there, thin this out, and then we're going to cut this off. Okay, so we've got both of them cut out, and then I'm going to use the uh, flat, uh, sanding disc on that grinder to just shape it a little bit, and I'll probably shape it more, but super easy to do. That's why having these guys is so important. Okay, so just quickly welded. I probably should have turned the heat down a little bit because it was popping through. And here's the one that had the big gap. That's what I was welding first. Um, a little tricky to weld a big gap like that on thin wall. Um, but watch how easily this cleans up with a little sanding. Alright. So... Looking pretty clean now. I don't know if it's hard to cut. So now we're gonna uh, cut open the front here. I wanted to weld this first so that when I'm cutting it's not vibrating or doesn't try and tear this piece off with that big cut in it. So. Alright guys, so <clears throat> these are actually a little more difficult to make than I remember. And I think if I was to redo this, I wouldn't do this cutting and everything. I would just cut it here and then add two little plates of metal because then you'd already have the width and you wouldn't have to do this bend and all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of fun to try it the hard way sometimes. And here's how I am getting that extra width. Down here, the pliers. A little hard to do while holding the GoPro. And then grab here again. Bend back. You can kind of get the idea. So here's the lifter sitting on the arms. Um, and it's tempting to probably just drill through this as it's sitting down. But because you want this to uh, sit in the correct location just after 90, I suggest putting it like this and marking and then drilling, which will actually end up being a little different. It'll probably sit up like this. But if you drill while it's down here, it may not be able to make that full swing. So um, mark when it's vertical and I think you'll be better off. So I am cleaning up um, just some of the edges and cleaning up some of the metalwork. And I'm using one of my favorite tools. This is a Leatherman Wave. I've had this, um, a Leatherman Wave since I was 11 years old. I got one for my birthday. This is actually the third one I've had. Um, parts some of the tools broke on it but if you take it into the leatherman shop they have just replaced it for free so instead of repairing it they just swap it out um, if you want if it's really sentimental then you can ask for them to repair it they might be able to do that but for the most part they just swap it out but i just wanted to show you this file that i use all the time super nice for cleaning up stuff i know you get a set of files at the hardware store i haven't done that yet but just having this in the truck um, having it with me knowing that I've got all these tools. I honestly use it all the time. And <clears throat> I also have um, this Leatherman pouch for it, which I like a lot better than like the case that comes with it. Clips on um, and it's Velcro and it looks tactical and I love it. So just wanted to share that with you. All right, I'm harvesting some bearings. This board could use new bearings and instead of buying bearings just for the awning, I'm gonna buy bearings for the board instead and use these guys for the awning so okay bearings are in the little lifter arms and they're gonna roll 
but if you can notice this metal part is still too um, proud of the bearing too tall so what we're going to do is pull the bearings out real fast and then just grind this down with the sanding disc until the bearing is more exposed All right, you guys, we're getting really, really close to being done here. Um, the arms are all made. They are painted. They're drying a little bit. I used this um, Krylon all-in-one hammered black paint. I really like the hammered paint because it hides <laughs> imperfections and it gives a nice professional look. Almost looks like powder coating. Um, I really like using it. So I've been using that on a lot of my projects. Arms are all made, like I said. The ends are drilled out to put the uh, bolts through to hold the tarp. Um, I've drilled here, this is the seven foot four inch um, arm. It's the longest one, it's on the outside. This is basically seven feet, this is seven foot four. If you're using the same size tarp I am, the um, I think it's 11 by eight and a half. Um, I'll put the exact size in the video, but this works on those three if you have a larger tarp like a 12 foot by 10 foot which are hard to find then you can use this other one and you'll get more coverage so that's why i did that um here is the hinge all painted and ready to go and looking good we got our lifter arms with our little old bearings in there those are drying and yeah so the other part is the bag, and I've mentioned this already, but this is the ARB bag, and it's marketed as the 200 um, or 2,000 millimeter by 2,000 millimeter, I believe, um, and that's basically for their eight foot by eight foot awning. You can find this online, and it's about 35 bucks. So once we um, get all the paint dried, I'm going to put the arms into the hinge, put the bolts on, put the bag on, um, and then we will get to mounting. So pretty dang excited. <clears throat> so arms, arms are in the bracket now, and because I have made this before, I have my bracket already pre-drilled with holes that correspond to the holes on my rack. This is super important. Whatever you're mounting it to needs to be very strong. Uh, the basket rack works great because it's that trust um, kind of structure where it gives a lot of support in both directions. Um, so that's where the main weight and leverage is all transferred to. And then out here I have um, another rod, little aluminum bar that goes inside the bag and that just keeps the bag from falling. So that's how it's attached on mine. Um, if you're attaching it to something solid, good to go. Um, just make sure whatever you're attaching to is really strong because that's like a seven foot arm on whatever you're on, kind of trying to break it. So make sure you have something very strong to mount it to. Okay, so next step is put this into the ARB bag and set it up there. Then once it's up, we'll put the tarp on. So now the awning is mounted to the rack through the bag that holds the bag on there just straight through get make sure you give yourself enough room for the to clear the hinge so the bag extends past the hinge quite a bit maybe about four inches um yeah now we're just gonna button in the front and on to the next part all right you guys the awning is on the truck all zipped up and super happy with how it turned out awning 2.0 I think is a success. You can see that's where the uh, support arm for the bag is attached through. And then that is where the awning is bolted through to that plate. So let's go open it up. All right, you guys, hopefully that wasn't too hard to follow along. Um, that's the first time I've tried making a video while I was building something. And it definitely feels like someone's looking over your shoulder. So hopefully uh, it was easy to follow and you could use it um, when you build your own. So now we're at the fun spot. We've got it fully mounted on the truck. Everything's done. Let's open it up and see what we made. All right, so 
ARV bag. Super nice. Again, only 35 bucks for this bag. Make sure it clears the hinge. Check out the new hinge. So much narrower, so much smaller. I like that so much better. Drop this down. Open it just a little bit here. And then we're just using a regular tarp. I've got these straps. Um, these were actually off a child uh, mirror for the back of my car and I was getting rid of it. So I grabbed these. They work perfect for this. This goes over here. Just loosely connects. Ah. And then just grab the other corner. And that goes all the way back here. And this strap could be a little bit longer and make closing this a little easier, but it works. All right. Okay, so with the new awning, this is the second one, I finally added the additional two lifting arms. And there you have it. It's fully set up. The new uh, awning. <laughs> Subscribe! <laughs> Super stoked, fully set up, three arms, $10 tarp, uh, I think about $60 of steel, and that's it. I hope you guys liked the build, hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for more videos, let me know if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments, and thanks for watching.